Thank God we have one more game against this clown. One more game against him, and then that's it. Now, if I was the Bears players, that's the game you circle your calendar on. Especially from the standpoint, that same guy said, I still own you. Not only to your fans, to you guys, as well as to uh, saying that on your field. That is the most ultimate sign of disrespect. Aaron Rodgers essentially just took a big shit on the Chicago Bears' entire organization. So, first things first, you would think the Bears are going to circle their calendar date for against Green Bay when they have to go to Lambeau. And that's when you get payback for what they did to you on your field and for what Aaron Rodgers said to you on your field. The only problem with that standpoint, me saying that is this, it's a whole lot easier to say that type of logic than actually do it. Because guess what? I know it's not going to happen because every time we go to Lambeau, it's the same old song and dance. Now, I don't know if that same old song and dance is going to change when Aaron Rodgers finally is up out of Green Bay, if that's the case, if that happens. That's a big if. I don't know why the Packers would literally throw away that stuff of Aaron Rodgers for Jordan Love. Hopefully, like I said, Jordan Love turns out to be a bust and they know and Packer fans know what it's like to be in a constant quarterback carousel. But obviously, that's the number one thing I guess I can take out of this game is the fact that Aaron Rodgers still owns us and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. He's not wrong, but it's when you hear when you hear it as a Bears fan on the broadcast, it pisses you off. It pisses you off. You want to know why it pisses you off? Because year after year after year after year after year, they hype this game up like it's some sort of big gigantic rivalry when in the past decade it has not been. It's been what Aaron Rodgers has just said um, after he scored that touch, that essentially the game clinching touchdown. And it's just been a complete domination owning from Aaron Rodgers and the Packers from the standpoint they continue to do it over and over again. And nothing's changed. It doesn't matter what the who the quarterback is. It doesn't matter who the head coach is. It's the same result at the end of every damn Sunday. We getting our butts kicked to the Green Bay Packers and losing. And the crazy thing is that game in Lambeau, that's going to be on national television, NBC. So is Aaron Rodgers going to say that again on his own field? It only makes sense. It only makes sense that, well, he would say that. So, listen, you know, the Bears are the, – the, the games like today make me sick and tired of the Chicago Bears with their ineptitude. Now, here's the thing. The game starts off good. Okay, we kick the ball off, and – Packers are starting off on defense. They're moving down. They're moving down the field. I'm like, oh great! They're gonna move down the field. They're gonna they're gonna open this game up with a touchdown. Defense makes defense gets a stand. They get a stop. Sack on third down to Aaron Rodgers from Cleo Mack. Great, great, great! You get the ball. You go all the way down the field behind a, a little bit behind the arm of Justin Fields and but and also with the legs of Khalil Herbert, who was great this game. I'm not gonna take that away. Which, again, let me just say this. We got a really stud running back in David Montgomery. It seems like you have a pretty nice one-two punch um, with Herbert. Damian Williams seems like he's pretty talented, too. My question is this. Why do we still have Tariq Cohen? Why? That's my question. His versatility... Why do we still have him? Honestly, you might as well, when he comes back, look into trading him. It can release some of that cap money you have all tied up. Don't know why you paid a guy who's hurt and is not even playing till this time, till this week. It's week six, and he still hasn't recovered. He got hurt way back in week three of last season. 
and he's still not playing. And it's week fucking six of this season. Is he going to come back or not? Because if he's not, why are we paying him? The same thing I can ask the question of why are we paying Jimmy Graham when we're not using him no more than we use Cohen? Anyways, as I was saying, we go down the field and we make a statement drive after a statement defensive stand. A statement drive. And that's going down the field and scoring a touchdown. Great stuff. That's how you set the tone and you go up to the Packers and you tell the Packers, this is, this is how this game, we're going to get down and dirty and we're going to take it to you guys. We may go down fighting, but as long as we go down fighting, we're going to continue to fight and we're going to give it our all. And it looks like, okay, the Bears came out prepared like, this is how you need to come out in a rivalry type of game. You punch the team in the mouth, and you guess what? You keep doing that over and over again. And you, that was a great drive. And everything on that first drive, that was just the same exact game plan you had to do. Packers get the ball back. We get another stop. Good, good. You can really take control of this game now and really have the Packers not, I would say, reeling on their heels because it's still early in the game, but at least have the Packers be a little woozy all over the place. Like, whoa, I didn't expect these guys to freaking come out like that. We need to step our game up. We're playing down. We're playing down to a level we haven't played. And you think, okay, we got to go. If we go 14 nothing, hell, to even 10 nothing, guess what? I'm not saying we're smooth sailing, but guess what? We dished out that first jab, that first punch to the Packers. They're, they're, they're essentially woozy now. They're like, okay, okay. Now we see what's going on. You get around to midfield, and the refs miss a bogus offsides penalty, which was offsides, and Justin Fields thought he had a free play, didn't really have the awareness. It was kind of messed up, to be honest. That's morally on the refs. And Justin Fields throws a pick, which – Makes the Packers get the ball back, and they go right down the field. And from that point on, at that point in the game, the Bears literally did next to near nothing on offense till, well, guess what? They scored to cut it to a 17-14 game. Okay, so the offense isn't moving the damn ball whatsoever throughout the second quarter, the third quarter, and some parts of the fourth quarter till it's late stage fourth quarter stuff. Okay, wonderful. The schemes definitely freaking is working, right? Right? Because it only makes sense that we would go away from what worked on the first drive and completely do the opposite of everything we did so great on the first drive and just not do it again. Again, Matt Nagy likes to play coach to coach is scared. Essentially, he's playing with fire. He play he he coaches not to win games. He coaches to lose them. Wonderful. Anyways, so you get down so anyways, after all that non-existent BS, the Packers go up 17 to to 17 to 7. At this point in the game, the you know, when that happens, you as a Bear fan is like this game's freaking over. All it's going to take is a one more Packers touchdown, and it's done. No moss. The Bears are done. Bears get a stop. Okay. They get a stop on a suck by Akeem Hicks. Okay. We get a stop. Offense gets the ball back. We need a score offense because guess what? We, we, we have to find some way to get back in this game. And to the offense's credit, to Justin Fields, who was magnificent in that drive, going five for five on that drive for 64 yards, takes the Bears down the field, and he scores them a touchdown. And it's 17-14. Okay, Bears are back in business. This is a game again. The Bears defense needs a stop, the biggest stop they can get in this game so they can put the, get the ball back in the offensive hand. And you got some pretty good, nice momentum there. And guess what? You, maybe the offense goes in the field and score. Well, the defense, like the defense always typically does, is the type of defense where, guess what? When we need to count on them the most, they fail us. Our offense does their job, and they're like, okay, we did our job finally. We, put, we got the ball down. We need you guys to get us to stop so we can get the ball back. 
And the same thing happens with the Bears. It's good old Chicago Bears football. Defense keeps the Bears in the game long enough. Offense finally gets a touchdown and scores. Makes it a closer game than what it should have been. Because the defense has been fighting. And the one time we need to count on the defense the most, it fails to show up and it lets them down. You see what I mean? It's kind of a scale type of thing. The scale, when it goes in the defensive favor, the offense isn't doing anything to help up the defense. But when the offense actually is starting to do some things, you see the scales tip and the defense can't do nothing and pick up their slack. It's a constant unbalance of effects. It's never equal. It's never equal between the offense and the defense. The only time I saw that in this game was the very first drive of for the defensive series and the offensive series. That was the one time they were equal at one point in this game. After that, it was, oh, then, oh, and then, oh. It was morally, oh, uh, it was morally, this is the offense, oh, defense right here, and then, Offense, oh, you have Aaron Rodgers march down the field, score essentially a game-winning touchdown, and on that ensuing touchdown run, he's talking to the Bear fans who are in the stands booing him and everything, saying he still owns you. I don't give a damn any, anything. You can say I'm a, you can say that's dirty, whatever. You hit that man. I don't care if you get ejected. You hit that man. You do not have another man, let alone your rival, freaking come up and stay on your field. He owns you. That is the ultimate sign of disrespect. That doesn't go to the players. That goes to the coaches and the organization as a whole. Because it's true. The Packers have been owning the Chicago Bears for the past damn decade. It hasn't been a rivalry. This man, Aaron Rodgers, is 22-5. and five against the Bears. That's damn near flawless. The last time we beat the damn Packers was, I believe, was the 2018 clinching game where we won the North. After that, you would think, oh, a new dawn has started for the Bears at that point in time. I remember, you know, saying, finally, the Bears can now run the North. This is the chance where the Bears finally are the better team in the NFC North, and this is where you have this... Ties of switch flip, where now it's the Packers that was be kicking your butts. It's the Bears that are going to be throwing the Packers around like they're nothing. I thought that was going to be the moment, but ensuingly the next couple of years, it ends up being the same song and dance. And again, just like today, same song, same dance. The Bears lose to the Packers 24 to, 24 to 14. Again, what can I say? Another piss poor, pathetic effort from the offense and a great job from the defense. When we need you most, you just said, you know what? Let's not do this. <sighs> let's talk about the phases of the game. Obviously, let's start off with the offense. All right. You know, now I'm just leaving offense for last. Let's talk about the defense. The defense, I thought, was fine. You ask me, I didn't think they played really well. They played well in spurts. They did. And then the one time, like I mentioned, again and again and again, they were the team, they were the defense that battled and kept the game 17-7. And they were waiting on the offense to finally score. Okay, offense finally scores. Well, then, defense, you need to do your job like you did on the last defensive series and get a stop. Because guess what? We need the ball back in our hands. And the defense just didn't do that. They didn't. You have Devonta Adams just running all free, wide open. Jalen Johnson, we got to give him praise, but at the same time, we got to give him criticisms too. There was two times in this game where Jalen Johnson had horror, horrific coverage of Devonta Adams. The one was when the Packers first scored a touchdown in the slot. Jalen Johnson didn't even put any pressure on him. Didn't press him up. Didn't freaking get any jams in or jams in to knock Devontae Adams off his route. He just willy-nilly lets him go right up the seam 
and runs a simple two-yard slant, and Devontae Adams is in Bears territory. Horrific coverage. On the same drive where the Packers go to score the game-winning, essentially the game-clinching touchdown, Jalen Johnson's same slot thing. He's pressed up, but he doesn't go with him. He just presses him up and then just lets him go on free, and then he's like, okay, I'm not going to cover him no more. Now, I'm guessing that's a zone coverage or a man. I don't know if that was a man or a zone coverage. It looks like it was a zone coverage. So somebody didn't do that. Personally, if you ask me, if Jalen Johnson was trailing Devontae Adams, he should be on that. I don't know what Jalen Johnson was doing, but you let Aaron, you let Devontae Adams catch a 41-yard pass, damn near almost touches, gets a touchdown, and you're like, dude, what the hell are we doing? We're not doubled. We're not making any efforts to have some bracketed coverage to double team him, so Aaron Rodgers freaking can throw it to somewhere else. Two, the pressure got home early in the game, but as the game progressed, the pressure wasn't getting there. And this is for a Packers offensive line that was all sorts of beat up and everything, all sorts of. Just injured. Their starting center, by God, got out of this game. And you're telling me you couldn't put any more pressure on him? Oh, please. I think outside, honestly, outside of probably Aaron Jones and Devonta Adams, the Packers have n decent skill talent, but it's not all that. But then again, what do I say? It goes to show you the Bears' defense, especially in the back end, isn't as good as advertised. It also doesn't help when you don't force damn near any turnovers against Aaron Rodgers. If Aaron, Ro Aaron Rodgers had a decent game, honestly, if you ask me, he had a freaking successful game. You know, it was fine by his standards. He could have played better. But if you're not forcing a turnover, you're not going to change anything. Not forcing anything. Another thing before I get out of the defense, man. Mario Edwards Jr., Listen, somebody, some coaches need to get in his ear or something. Otherwise, just cut the dude. Again, Mario Edwards has another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Now, it was debatable from the standpoint that how it happened, but at the same time, he can't be doing that. This is how many weeks in a row he's done unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And he's just getting more play time. No, you come over, you bring him over when he when you when you bring him over off the penalty and you tell him you you're you're gonna be sitting for a quarter or two. You constantly do that. Or you just in you just have him inactive for next week's game and it's his punishment for saying until you cut this unsportsmanlike conduct penalty crap down, you're gonna continue not to play. So Make him inactive for next week to set the lesson straight. You will not be doing those penalties again. But you want to know why? We don't discipline. The Bears coaches don't discipline their players. They just let the Bears players do willy-nilly bullshit. And stuff like that is going to let guys like Mario Edwards Jr. think he can do stuff like unsportsmanlike conduct penalties when he has no business doing that stuff. Can someone please just bench him and tell him, no more, no moss, you're not playing this upcoming week. Don't even bother shooting up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because there's too many unsportsmanlike conduct penalties this year and even in the past. Every time I turn around, unsportsmanlike conduct, who is it always coming from? Number 97 of the defense. Stop. It's getting annoying. Please. Otherwise, they just need to cut his ass. Another thing the defense is plagued by. Missed freaking tackles. Good God. There's too many times we miss too many tackles all over the place. There was times in this game we had sp stuffed plays, and then guess what? We're not wrapping up and making effective tackles. And guys get loose for more yardages. You see, that's the most important fundamental on defense. 
chopping your feet, and making an effective tackle. The Bears just don't do that. And it starts at the top with their say with their safety, Eddie Jackson. And mostly this will start with the top with Sean Desai. You're the defensive coordinator. You should expect your defense to, to hit these players and not miss tackles and bounce off of them like they're essentially, you know, freaking oil. So that means to show me that Sean Desai is not working on the fundamentals for these defensive players on how to tackle effectively. Wrap up. I don't care. Wrap up and hold on. There's too many times within the past couple of years I've seen Bear players on defense go for tackles and they bounce right off because they're lunging at they're lunging to try to make a tackle and they're lowering their head instead of keeping their head up and essentially chopping their feet and wrapping up and coming to a fit. I coach the game of football. Trust and believe. I know. I played the game of football on the defensive side of the ball too. I know what the hell I'm talking about. Listen, I would say credit to the defense for not making this game a blowout. But technically, it kind of was a blowout. It looked worse than what the score indicates. The Packers should have blew us up, blew us out 35, at, at least 35 to 14. They should have blown us all out. But defense did the best to keep us in the game. When we needed them the most, they, they freaking just bailed. So good job on the defense. You guys deserve a D. Honestly, I should be giving you guys an F. But you guys get a D, at least a D. You're not getting a D plus, a D. Let's go into this nonchalant fucking offense that, guess what? Even though Fields is in there, it still doesn't work. It's the same old song and dance over and over and over again. New quarterback, same old offense. I don't care who the hell's calling the plays. Matt Nagy, Bill Lazor, same old offense. You do something right. You the same the first drive. That's the best thing you did this entire game. Other than maybe scoring 14 points that drive too. But the best drive of the game for the Bears was that very first drive from the start. Very first drive. After that, for some reason, the Bears coaches just go away from that and don't reciprocate what they did on the first drive. But it's just like they're actively. Yeah, we could do that, but you know what? Let's take this in another direction. What the hell are we doing? Justin Fields evaluation. Let me pull up the stats for Justin Fields because I might as well. Um, oh, darn. The Sky are losing. Hopefully the Sky win because they win the chip. Anyways, uh, Justin Fields was 16 for 27, 174 yards passing, one TD and one pick. Um. The pick, I'm not going to fault him on that because he thought it was a free play, but at the same time, you have to have more awareness in knowing if a flag was thrown, and it clearly wasn't. But, um, okay. Um, I thought Justin Fields played all right. He could have played a lot better. I do think he held onto the ball too long. I do think he made indecisive de decisions when it came to taking sacks. Like, late in the game, you're at this point where you cannot take a sack. Otherwise... You know, you're wasting clock, and two, it puts you out of field goal range. And there was two times where Justin Fields inadvertently takes very bad sacks. That cannot happen. Now, for some reason, the offensive line wasn't doing the end of the job. Cody Whitehair made Kenny Clark look just like somebody just let going through, un like, literally free. The offensive line didn't do a good job this game at all. The one time I saw the offensive line actually make a point of attack was that first drive. After that, they were getting blown up. But as for Justin Fields, he needs to realize that, guess what? He can't take sacks in late-game situations. Throw the ball away because, one, it stops the clock. Two, it doesn't make you lose yardage. That's something he's got to improve, and that's rookie mistakes. It's like we said, we got to deal with the rookie growing pains. But even in that sense, he has to have more common sense to understand that, guess what? He can't do that. And I envision his press conference, he'll probably say, yeah, I probably should have not taken those two sacks. That's on me. I should have thrown the ball away. And that's just a learning point. Now he learns that, guess what? He can't do that again. 
may happen again because he's a rookie, but he has to know he can't do that because taking sacks in key moments in big games like that, it's going to shoot you. Also on that particular drive, when he took the two sacks, what the hell was the offensive scheme? You have Greg Olson essentially showing the play, and you just have it to where all the receivers are running deep, which means they're all locked up. It isn't short route stuff like a slant or a hitch or some five yard out to get into better field goal position. None of that, because I don't know, that's just not common sense for Matt Nagy. And that's how, and over in the rookie's case, you're like, nothing's open. I got to try to make something out of nothing. And he ends up taking a sack. Again, you can blame Fields for that, but it's also at the same time, you can't fault him for getting sacked because guess what? There's nothing open. Nothing. And come to think of it, guess what? You have your starting receivers out there, and they can't get open off fourth or fifth string DBs. The only number one DB starter is Adrian Amos out there. Darnell Savage went down. Kevin King's not there. Jair Alexander is not there. You're telling me this defense, this offense couldn't pick apart that secondary? That secondary sounds like a trash secondary with the guys they have back there. This is what I'm talking about. This offensive scheme sucks. They, you know, they completely go against something simple. You're watching Aaron Rodgers and the Packers adjust and say, okay, the rush is getting home. We need to create quick slant passes. Two-step, two, three-step drops, balls out. Bears can't even think to do that. I mean, we got a rookie quarterback. Yeah, let's have him hold on the ball a little bit longer than originally thought. Instead of just having him have maybe two to three-step drop passes where it's like okay slants there throw it boom right then and there and then you open it up go deeper because guess what the Packers all defense will have to back off and sag off a bit be like okay they're beating us they're beating us um short beating us short let's stand back a bit so maybe we can play those routes better but no Bears don't do that because Matt Nagy's not Mr. Obvious in doing that and all in all, if your receivers can't get off freaking fourth or fifth string DBs, that goes to show you how effective your receiving room is. And Allen Robinson expects to be paid how much money he wants, and he can't get off fourth or fifth string DBs? Hell no. If you can't get off fourth or fifth string DBs, why the hell should I pay you this type of money? And also, why can't you scheme better? It goes to show you this. The Packers adjusted. The Bears failed to adjust. Simple as that. Simple as that. Bears failed to adjust and do anything correctly from what they did to the first drive and adjust accordingly. Okay, this is how the Packers are going to do that. Let's do this. And it ends up in a damn loss. Another embarrassing loss to the Packers. We have another, you have the opposing rival quarterback saying, I still own you. I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to say this before I get out of here. Matt Nagy, I still think he deserves to be fired. He should be fired. There's no way in hell you should be getting your asses handed to you against the Green Bay Packers. At least make it respectably, respectably close. I hate losing to the Packers, but my God, at least lose going down fighting. Don't lose to these clowns, not even putting worth a damn effort. I knew we were going to beat the Packers, but I thought the game would at least be a little bit more competitive, that they would get up to play, especially from the standpoint of what we saw on the first defensive and offensive series. It was the same old, same old. Same old, same old. New co same new quarterback, same old result. And again, you question – now, we know the one thing the McCaskies don't like doing or don't like seeing what happens, losing to the Packers. So – if you're the McCaskies, I bet you're pissed off. Especially if you're hearing that the opposing quarterback is saying he owns you. You should get pissed off at your GM and your, your freaking head coach is saying, why are we not having the necessary talent to go up against those guys? That's where you ask the questions, George. You ask the question, why could the offense not move against the secondary that had next to near no starters in that secondary? 
ask that question. Ask the question, why can't my defense not get a key stop when we need to get a stop to help the offense? No questions like that are being asked. They'll just go over, I hate the freaking Packers. Why? But, hey, that's an indicament. The one thing we know the McCaskies don't like happening is the Bears losing to the Packers. And that's an indictment on Matt Nagy. So, George, you better go up to Matt Nagy and say, why are we losing to the Packers? Mind you, Matt Nagy is 1-6 against the Packers. 1-6. That's a pretty terrible record against your rival team. That one win was when you clinched the NFC North. After that, the Packers have been kicking your ass. Maybe if I show this thing to George, maybe I'll understand that Matt Nagy might need to be fired because his offense sucks, everything about him sucks, and he doesn't do anything to get this team better. But listen, if you're the Bears players, one, you should be pissed off. I don't know why Bear, I know in a good sportsmanship, you should shake your opponent's hand, but it's your rival. Walk off the damn field and don't have no bother. Don't bother even talking to them, especially to a man that said he owns your field. So the guys who were shaking Aaron Rodgers' hand, I hope you heard that. I hope you heard that stuff. And you're like, why did I shake this dude's hand? Those are comments that you put on your TV screens for a whole week. You go take that anger and aggression on the freaking Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's, they're not going to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but at least you can take that anger and aggression on them and make the Tampa Bay Buccaneers work to defeat you. That's growth. If you're, chal- if you're taking a Super Bowl contender to its limit, it's not on and off, on and off, on and off. And then when it's the Packers game at Lambeau, you have that whole thing there where it's like, okay, you may, yeah, you owned us for the past decade, but you know what? You're not going to own us tonight. And that's where you go out there in Lambeau and you go kick the Packers' ass, but that's not going to happen. That's not. It's not going to happen. Because you want to know why? <coughs> Bless me. The Bears are sorry. They're a sorry piece of shit. And this is a sorry piece of shit organization. Look, that's it. That's all I got to say. I didn't even rant as much as I wanted to rant because what's the point? I'm just ranting over nothing. I'm just at this point waiting for Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace to be fired because that's the only way this team's going to find some semblance of getting better. Anyways, the Bears lose to the Packers yet again, and Aaron Rodgers still yet owns us continually, and he will continue to own us till he's out of the division, hopefully. But the Bears got another tough test against the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers who, well, let's just be honest, uh, they're probably going to be, if not just as pissed off, if not more pissed off than the Bears after this game. Because guess what? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers should have beat us last year in Chicago, and they didn't. And especially Tom Brady's going to want to exact his revenge for everybody making fun of him, um, saying about the whole fourth down situation stuff. You know Tom Brady wants to get people back, and when you're playing with a pissed-off Tom Brady, it's like Skip Bayless likes to call him, Psycho Tom. You don't want to fuck with that guy. The Bears may be in for a rude awakening, and this might be the schedule where, this might be the part of the schedule where, good God, the losses are going to hit hard, and you're going to be on a big losing streak, because look at this. You go to Tampa Bay next Sunday. Then you got 49ers at home. It's a very, it's a definitely winnable game, but 49ers can still beat you. You go to Pittsburgh. That's not a tough place to play. I know the Steelers ain't as good as they once were, but that's not a tough place to play. Then you got to play the damn Ravens. They blew out the Chargers today. Albeit that's at home, but they blew out the Chargers. You don't think Lamar Jackson is going to freaking run all over this defense and pass over this defense too? I think so. Then... You kind of then you play, yeah, Thanksgiving Day against the Lions. Now, that's at the Lions territory. They almost last time we went there, we almost lost to those clowns. But who's to say the Lions can't beat you there? You play the Cardinals who look like they're going all in. Then you play Green Bay at Lambeau, which should be your circle date, but probably not. Then the Vikings. Then you go to Seattle. Russell Wilson will probably be back by then. You play the Giants. Who knows what Giants team you're getting? You don't know if you're getting the 
inconsistent Giants team or a Giants team that will actually go out there and play some good football. And then you end the season off with the Vikings in Minnesota. So doesn't look favorable to me. It definitely looks like from the schedule, this is already, you can lose one, two, three, four games in a row. And guess what? You're a three and the Bears are three and three, three and four, three and five, three and six, three and seven. So by the time if they lose to the Ravens, if they lose four straight, they could end up being three and seven by before they get to Thanksgiving Day. That's not good. That's not good. That's fireable offense type of stuff right there. But we know the Bears management ain't going to fire Matt Nagy because they'd rather do that in the offseason instead of just firing him right now. It'd be better if they just fired him right now and they get rid of that entire incompetent staff. Whatever. Anyways, I'll be back next week talking Chicago Bears football as the Bears will epically probably lose in a freaking blowout loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If we couldn't move the ball for three and a half quarters against a Packers team that had damn near no secondary to believe on, what makes you believe that we're going to do anything against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Lord have mercy. And you know Todd Bowles likes to blitz. And our offensive line, well, guess what? They're not a very good to fit with the blitz. And with a young quarterback, it might be easy pickings for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, my God. I guess the only thing is I'm going to pray that Justin Fields does not get hurt. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, I guess the only thing we can hope for as Chicago fans is that the Sky win today and they win, their, they win the championship. It will bring some good news in Chicago. Other than that, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day. I know we're going to you on this video. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Peace.